Welcome back to the Organic Chemistry Basics. Today I will be showing you how to name simple alkanes and include enough examples to help you understand the concept. The first thing we need to ask ourselves is why do we need naming? And this is important because throughout organic chemistry you will see many different types of molecules and we need a way for us to understand and be able to communicate with scientists from all over the world. The first way to name an organic compound is by using its common name. The common name is like a nickname which is widely used among scientists but is not the technical or systematic way of identifying that molecule. The second method of naming is the IUPAC method and this is the systematic way of naming organic compounds. IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry and the reason it's useful to us is because it provides us with a systematic or step-by-step -step way of naming different types of molecules. The next thing to ask yourself is what's in a name? Think of your family, friends, and other people around you and how many parts they have to their name. The average name will have a first name, there will be a last name, and they may even have a middle name. In addition, some people will have a prefix to their name and some will have a suffix. Let's look at John Doe as an example. He might have a middle name of Max, have a prefix of Mr and a suffix the second. These are five different parts to the name of which John Doe are really the most important and tell you most about the name. The same thing applies to organic compounds. We'll start with the simplest where we have just the first and last name but over the next few naming videos I will show you how to apply this entire puzzle to find a systematic name for an organic compound. Simple alkanes only have two parts to their name. The first name of a simple alkane will refer to the number of carbons in the chain and the last name will refer to the type of carbon chain. Recall that an alkane has only sigma or single bonds with sp3 hybridization. To name an alkane we will use ane as the last name to show that there are only single bonds in this molecule. For the first name we will use specific words that identify the number of carbons in the parent chain. The words that identify carbon lengths of 1 through 10 carbons are very important and you must memorize them for the average organic course. The words that identify carbon chains of 11 through 20 carbons are not as important to memorize as not every professor requires you to know them. The numbers are as follows. 1 is meth, 2 is eth, 3 prop, 4 but, 5 pent. From 6 through 10 these numbers should look somewhat familiar. 6 is hex, 7 hept, 8 oct, 9 non, and 10 dec. For numbering chains of 11 through 20, recognize that the name is made of a number plus 10. For example, undec comes from un or uno, meaning 1, and dec, which is 10. So 11 we have undec, 12 is dodec, 13 tridec, 14 tetradec, 15 through 19 start to look like what we have from 5 through 10 or 5 through 9 that's pentadec, 16 hexadec, 17 heptadec, 18 octadec, 19 nonadec and 20 is a new word icos. The very best way to memorize numbers or concepts like these is putting it on flashcards. Keep the flashcard in your pocket and pull it out anytime you have a moment this way you're studying and memorizing without really taking time out of your day to study. I have two final tips to give you before we start naming problems. The first tip is mark up your molecule. This is important because if you number, highlight, or circle different parts of your molecule, you'll be able to cross them out systematically as you tackle each piece to ensure that you don't forget anything. The second tip is to see your molecule as a puzzle. If you try to name a complex molecule all at once, you are most likely going to leave out one little piece. However, if you treat it as a puzzle and find each piece one at a time, you can be confident that you covered all your basics and be confident with your final name result. Let's start with a very simple molecule, CH4. When I count my carbons, I see I only have one carbon in the chain. The word for one is meth, and the type of carbon chain 
I recognize only single bonds, which makes it A and E. Putting my name together, this molecule is methane. For my next example, I will look at a line structure representation. If you are uncomfortable with line structure, refer to my previous video and how to draw and recognize these molecules. Since this is a longer molecule, I will first number the chain. I see that I have four carbons, which is butte. I only see single bonds, which is ane, giving me a final name of butane. Given a line structure representation of a molecule, I recognize the alkane by its single or sigma bonds. What if I'm given a molecule in its condensed structure? How do I recognize an alkane as opposed to an alkene or alkyne? There is a simple formula, and we'll use this example to explain how the formula works. The formula tells me that an alkane has CnH2n plus 2. If I have n number of carbons in my molecule, I will have 2 times n number of hydrogens plus 2 additional hydrogens. Looking at my condensed molecule expanded in the lowest form, I want you to recognize that every carbon has 2 hydrogens attached to it, one on the top and one on the bottom. So if carbon is N, in this case 5, then hydrogen will be 2N, which is 2 times 5, or 10, representing each hydrogen on top or bottom of the carbon. In addition, at the end of the chain, carbon needs to have its fourth bond, so we put two additional hydrogens, one on the right and the left, and this explains the plus 2 in the formula. Let's verify this. For CN, we have 5. H2N is going to be 2 times 5 plus 2, which gives me a total of 12. If I quickly count the hydrogens on my molecule, I see that indeed I have 12 hydrogens on my 5-carbon molecule. I recognize only single bonds in my Lewis structure, which supports the formula for the alkane. Given the condensed formula for this molecule, I first have to verify that it's indeed an alkane as opposed to an alkene or an alkyne and I will use the formula of CnH2n plus 2. If I count the carbons, I have 1, 2, 3. For hydrogens, I expect to have H2n plus 2, that's 2 times 3 plus 2, giving me a total of 8. And if I count here, I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this molecule is an alkane. Now let's name it accordingly. I have 1, 2, 3 carbons, so the first name will be pro. I know it's an alkane, so the last name will be ane, giving me a final name for this molecule of propane. Let's do one more example. I recognize that this molecule only has single bonds, so its last name will be ane for an alkane. I see that I have a total of nine carbons, giving me a first name of non, and the final name for this molecule will be nonane. The next type of molecule we'll look at is the substituted or branched alkane. You name the branch the same as you would an alkane, but instead of putting A-N-E at the end, you put Y-L. If I have a chain with a CH3 coming off it, this CH3 portion will be named meth because it has one carbon and Y-L because it's coming off a chain, so methyl. If I have another chain, but this time I have CH2CH3, this is two carbons, so F, YL for the branch, gives me an ethyl group, and so on. The reason these branches are called substituents is because they substitute for a hydrogen on a carbon chain. Recall from naming that the first and last name tell me how many carbons and the chain type. A substituent will be identified in the name as a prefix showing what I have and how many I have on the chain. Let's look at some examples. Looking at this example, we first have to identify the parent chain. A parent chain is the longest carbon chain in any molecule, and the substituent is anything that comes off of that parent chain. The second thing to talk about is numbering. When you number your carbon chain, you have to put the numbers so that your substituent gets the lowest possible number. The first thing I like to do is highlight my parent chain so I can differentiate between the chain and the substituents. Now I have the option of numbering starting from the left giving me a number 3 on my substituent. My other option is to number starting from the right 
giving my substituent a number 4. So my first set of numbering which gives the substituent a 3 is correct. Now let's name this molecule. I recognize only single bonds, so this will have A and E as its ending. I see that I have six carbons in my parent chain, giving me a first name of hex. When it comes to substituents, I like to highlight them. This way, I am sure that I name each one without missing it. My substituent has just one carbon, giving me meth. Recall that I have to add YL, so my substituent name is methyl. The methyl substituent can occur on any carbon within the chain, so I have to specify where it shows up. In this example, because it shows up on carbon 3, I name it 3-methyl. Now I can put my name together. I start with the substituent and then put the first and last name, giving me a final name of 3-methylhexane. When you put the name together, you put all the letters as if they are one continuous word, so it's 3-methylhexane rather than 3-methylhexane. When you have more than one number in a name, you put a comma between number to number. When you have letters and numbers, you put a dash between a letter and a number. For this example, recall that the parent chain is the longest carbon chain. Looking at the obvious, I will assume that my parent chain consists of just six carbons with a two carbon substituent, when in fact my parent chain has a total of seven carbons with a substituent of just one carbon. This happens because a carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bond is free to rotate, so be careful that you don't fall for the most obvious, but actually count your atoms. Now this is a rather simple chain, but it gets a little tedious when you're constantly counting and counting for a larger chain. What do I mean? Some people will start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then start from the, the beginning and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then start from this carbon and count and count and count. There is a shorter way to do this, and I call it the junction rule. A junction is where you have multiple carbons meeting at the same place and branching out in different areas. For example, this tertiary carbon here. Instead of counting the chain from right to left, left to right, top to bottom, I will simply find my junction, see how many chains I have branching out, and find the two longest chains for my parent chain. Here, in this junction, I have three chains. One chain has just one carbon, this lower chain has two carbons, and the chain on the left has four carbons. Two and four are my longest carbon chains. I saved myself all the counting, and I can go straight into highlighting my parent chain. Now I have to number the chain. I have the option of starting from the left or from the right. Recognize that if I start counting from the right, my methyl substituent has a number three, but if I start counting from the left, then my methyl substituent gets a number 5. So I know I have to start from the right, and I count a total of 7 carbons, giving me a first name of het. I see only single bonds, so I know that I have ane. My substituent, which occurs on carbon 3, has only one carbon, making it a methyl. Putting my molecule together, I start with my substituent, and then add the first and last name for a final name of 3-methylheptane. I hope you found this video very useful. If you learned anything from this video, please show your appreciation by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below. You can also email me your questions to tutorials at you can find me online at www.lea, spelled L-E-A-H, the number 4, S-C-I, dot com. You can also find me right here on my YouTube channel, Lea for Sci Tutorials, or search for Lea for Sci on Facebook and Twitter.